unidentified. My top UFO cases by Hector V. Bello, March 2018. The 1561 Celestial Phenomenon over Nuremberg. The 1561 Celestial Phenomenon over Nuremberg was a mass sighting of celestial phenomena or unidentified flying objects, UFO, above Nuremberg, Germany. The phenomenon has been interpreted by some modern UFO enthusiasts as an aerial battle, possibly of extraterrestrial origin. This view is mostly dismissed by skeptics, some referencing Carl Jung's mid-20th century writings about the subject, while others find the phenomenon is likely to be a sun dog. Around dawn on April 14, 1561, residents of Nuremberg saw what they described as an aerial battle, followed by the appearance of a large black triangular object, and then a large crash outside of the city. According to witnesses, there were hundreds of spheres, cylinders, and other odd-shaped objects that moved erratically overhead. A broadsheet news article was printed later that month, describing the event. The broadsheet illustrated a woodcut engraving and text by Hans Glaser, measuring 26.2 measuring centimeters by 38 centimeters. The document is archived in the prints and drawings collection at the Central Bibliothek Zungchen, Zurich, in Switzerland. The broadsheet describes objects of various shapes, including crosses, globes, two lunar crescents, and a black sphere, or a black spear, and tubular objects from which several smaller round objects emerged and darted around the sky at dawn. A description of the phenomenon of the time is the following. In the morning of April 14th, 1561, at daybreak between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred in, on the sun, and then this was seen in Nuremberg in the city, before the gates and in the country, by many men and women. At first, there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircular arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter and in the sun above and below and on both sides the color was blood there stood a round ball of partly dull partly black ferrous color likewise there stood on both sides and as a torus about the sun such blood red ones and other balls in large number about three in a line and four in a square also some alone in between these globes there were visible few there were there were visible a few blood red crosses between which there were blood red strips becoming thicker to the rear and in the front malleable like the rods of reed grass which were intermingled among them two rods or two big rods one on the right the other one on the left and within the small and big rods there were three also four and more globes these all st started to fight among themselves so that the globes which were first in the sun flew out to the one standing on both sides thereafter the globes standing outside the sun in the small and large rods flew into the sun besides the Besides, the globes flew back and forth among themselves and fought, and fought vehement, vehemently with each other for over an hour. And when the conflict in and again out of the sun was most intense, they became fatigued so, to such an extent that they all, as said above, fell from the sun down upon the earth, as if all all as if they all burned, and they wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. After all this, there was something like a black spear, very long and thick sighted. The shaft pointed to the east, the point pointed west. Whatever such signs mean, God alone knows, although we have seen shortly 
one after another many kinds of signs on the heavens which are sent to us by the Almighty God to bring us to repentance. We still are, unfortunately, so ungrateful that we despite such high signs and miracles of God, or we speak of them with ridicule and discard them to the wind in order that God may send us a frightening punishment on account of our ungratefulness. After all, the God-fearing will by no means discard these signs, but will take it to heart as a warning to their merciful Father in heaven, will mend their lives and faithfully beg God that he may avert his wrath, including the well-deserved punishment on us so that we may temporarily here and perpetually there live as his children. For it, may God grant us his help. Amen. By Hans Glaser, Letter Painter of Nuremberg. Some Modern Interpretations According to author Jason Colavito, the woodcut broadsheet became known as the modern culture after being published in Carl Jung's 1958 book Flying Saucers, A Modern Myth of things seen in the sky. A book which analyzed the archetypal meaning of UFOs. More recently, the event has been classified as a UFO sighting by many and even named the UFO battle over Nuremberg by a few, a few enthusiasts. Jung expressed a view that the spectacle was likely a natural phenomenon, with religious and military interpretations overlaying it. If the UFOs were living organisms, one would think of a swarm of insects rising in the sun, rising with the sun, not to fight one another but to mate and celebrate ma the marriage flight. A military interpretation would view the tubes as cannons and the spheres as cannonballs emphasize the black spearhead at the bottom of the scene and the glazer's own testimony that the globes fought vehemently until exhausted a religious view would emphasize the crosses jung thinks the images of four globes coupled with lines suggested crossed marriage quadern quadernites and forms the model for the primitive cross cousin marriage. It could also be an individ individuation symbol. The association of sunrise suggests the revelation of the light. Otto Billing made an effort to provide historical context for the apparition in his comments. He notes Nuremberg was one of the most prestigious cities of the late Middle Ages, a free and imperial city known for its wealth and nobility. It tried to maintain a neutrality during the furious warring between the Catholics and Protestants during the Reformation, but when one Protestant prince was rebuffed when he insisted on financial tributes to fund his battles, the city was besieged and its trade cut off. Through, though ultimately successful, in defending itself, the rebuilding of fortifications in Nuremberg necessitated a new round of taxation, and the city suffered hard times in its aftermath. On Good Friday, 1554, another siege happened, and one broadsheet publisher described mock sons and prognosticated God's will wanted confession of sinful ways i.e., or for example, the victims brought it on themselves. Another sky apparition followed in July of nights, fighting each other with fiery swords, thus warning a coming day of judgment. Very similar apparitions of knights fighting in the skies were frequently reported during the Thirty Years' War. Many similar broadsheet of wondrous signs exists in German and Swiss archives and Nuremberg seems the focus 
of a number of them, presumably because of the hardships and conflicts of the ex prosperous. Such conditions typically accentuate apocalyptic thought 